In this week's episode of Vaticano, we take a look back at Pope Francis' trips abroad, the moments that touched millions, his great speeches to the masses, and his personal touch. We take you into the great events and celebrations and hear his words and see his gestures, speaking to the people of our time, inviting conversion, reconciliation, peace, and demanding social justice, traveling the world as an ambassador of hope and mercy. Following in the footsteps of his predecessors, Pope Francis continues to make trips around the world. His mission, to bring a message of hope and mercy to every person, every people, every nation. A message of peace to the geographical and existential peripheries of humanity. From Asia to the Americas, passing through the Balkans and the African continent, Solely in 2015, the Pope made five international apostolic voyages. First destination of the year, Asia. In January of 2015, the Pope traveled to the Asian continent for the second time since his election as Pope. With this apostolic trip to Sri Lanka and the Philippines, the Pope underscored once more his soft spot for the church in the East. It lasted eight full days, during which the Pope traveled a total of 7,500 miles on seven flights. Sri Lanka, one of the most exciting moments of his stay in the island was the meeting with those affected by the bloody inter-ethnic conflict that beleaguered the nation for 26 years and took more than 100,000 civilian lives. Here at the Marian Shrine of Madhu in the north of Sri Lanka, Pope Francis spoke to multitudes, to all communities. He invited Tamils and Sinhalese ethnicities, all Hindus, Buddhists, Christians and Muslims to rebuild the unity they lost during the war. With his visit to Madhu, Francis was the first Pope in history to set foot on Tamil territory. There are families here today which suffered greatly in the long conflict which tore open the heart of Sri Lanka. Many people from North and South alike were killed in terrible violence and blasted of those years. No Sri Lankans can forget the tragic events associated with this very place or the sad day when the venerable statue of Mary dating to the arrival of the earliest Christians in Sri Lanka was taken away from her shrine. But our lady is remaining always with you. She is the mother of every home, of every wounded family, of all who are seeking to return to a peaceful existence. Today, we thank her for protecting the people of Sri Lanka from so many dangers, past and present. Mary, Never forgot her children on this resplendent island. During the three days he remained on the island, the Pope canonized then blessed Joseph Vaz. Originally from India, he arrived in Sri Lanka in 1687 as an evangelist, leading a resurgence of Catholicism in this part of the world. Saint Vaz thus became the first saint in the island's history. The next stop of the trip, the Philippines, the Asian country with the greatest number of Catholics and the third most of any in the world. A much awaited visit greeted with boundless enthusiasm by the church there that has 73 million faithful. Among all the meetings and celebrations on his schedule, the visit to the island of Tacloban stood out. There, Pope Francis met with survivors of the super typhoon Yolanda, which not long before struck the area with force, leaving behind more than 6,000 dead and four million people homeless.
With them, Pope Francis celebrated Mass in an impassioned homily. He revealed the main reason for the trip. I'd like to tell you something close to my heart. When I saw from Rome that, that catastrophe, I felt that I had to be here. Y ese día, esos días, decidí hacer el viaje aquí. And on those very days, I decided to come here. Quise venir para estar con ustedes. I'm here to be with you. Un poco tarde, me dirá, es verdad. A little bit late, I have to say. Pero estoy. But I'm here. Tantos de ustedes han perdido todo. So many of you have lost everything. Yo no sé qué decirles. I don't know what to say to you. Él sí sabe qué decirle. But the Lord does know what to say to you. Tantos de ustedes perdido parte de la familia. Some of you have lost part of your families. Solamente guardo silencio. All I can do is keep silence. Y los acompaño con mi corazón en silencio. And I walk with you all with my silent heart. On his last day in the Philippines, the Pope celebrated Mass in Manila's Rizal Park with six million faithful who received him joyfully. The second apostolic visit of 2015 came six months into the year. In June, Pope Francis made a lightning-quick visit to Sarajevo, the capital of Bosnia-Herzegovina, in the heart of the Balkans. It was an unexpected visit to the outskirts of Europe with the aim of reinforcing peaceful coexistence between Christians and Muslims who still suffer the scars of a war among members of the three historic groups, Serbian Orthodox Christians, Croatian Catholics, and Bosnian Muslims. During an ecumenical and interreligious meeting with representatives from the different confessions, the Pope emphasized the important role that dialogue among religions plays in achieving lasting peace. Il dialogo interreligioso prima ancora di essere discussioni. Interreligious dialogue, before being a discussion of the main themes of faith, is a conversation about human existence. This conversation shares the experiences of daily life in all of its concreteness, with its joys and sufferings, its struggles and hopes. It takes on shared responsibilities. It plans a better future for all. We learn to live together, respecting each other's differences freely. We know and accept one another's identity. Through dialogue, a spirit of fraternity is recognized and developed, which unites and favors the promotion of moral values, justice, freedom, and peace. Dialogue is a school of humanity and a builder of unity, which helps to build a society founded on tolerance and mutual respect. Una società fondata sulla tolleranza e il mutuo rispetto. This is a classic teaching of Pope Francis that by building a culture of encounter, a culture of dialogue, the world can live in peace. Just a month after the trip to Sarajevo came the third international trip of the year. In July, Pope Francis took off for his longest trip to date, a stop into his native Latin America. It was his first visit to a Spanish-speaking nation, and he chose three of the poorest countries on the continent, Ecuador, Bolivia, and Paraguay. The trip lasted eight days and was marked by the incredible diversity common to all three countries. During masses and events with the people, the Pope even pronounced words in three of the major indigenous languages of Quechua, Guarani, and Aymara. 
In addition to the institutional events on the trip schedule, the Pope met with the people on the streets. He reached out to the least, the marginalized, and brought them a message of hope and mercy. Among the most exciting moments of the trip was the visit to the Palmasola prison facility in Bolivia. There, Pope Francis spoke of the importance of differentiating between reclusion and exclusion. He encouraged the inmates to make their situation into an opportunity to be in solidarity. Aquí, en este centro de rehabilitación, la convivencia depende en parte de ustedes. Here, in this rehabilitation center, the way you live together depends to some extent on yourselves. Suffering and deprivation can make us selfish of heart and lead to confrontation. But we also have the capacity to make these things an opportunity for genuine fraternity. Help one another. Do not be afraid to help one another. The devil wants quarrels, rivalry, division, gangs. Don't let them play with you. Keep working to make progress together. No le hagan el juego. Luchen por salir adelante unidos. Another very intense moment was his visit to the immense shanty town of Bañaro Norte in Asuncion, the capital of Paraguay. With the area's inhabitants, the Pope denounced the hypocrisy of so many who, despite declaring themselves to be men of faith, live in complete indifference to the poverty and suffering of their brothers. Faith without solidarity is faith without Christ. It is faith without God, faith without brothers and sisters. There's a saying, and I hope I remember it accurately. It describes the problem of faith without solidarity. A God without people, a people without brothers and sisters, a people without Jesus. That is faith without solidarity. The first to show his solidarity was our Lord, who chose to live in our midst. I come to you here like those shepherds who went to Bethlehem. I want to be your neighbor. I want to bless your faith, your hands, and your community. I come to join you in giving thanks, because faith has become hope, and hope in turn kindles love. The faith which Jesus awakens in us is a faith which makes us able to dream of the future and to work for it here and now. During the entire trip, Francis repeatedly criticized the current economic model. He said it only respects logic and earnings, increasing the number of excluded and destroying God's creation. Then, just two months later, in the month of September, Pope Francis made an even longer trip, 10 days to Cuba and the United States. Reconciliation was the central word of the trip. First stop, Cuba. During his stay on the island, the Pope encouraged the political leaders to continue their work of opening up to the world, to become an example of reconciliation for all. In his four days on the island, Francis' actions and words overflowed with affection, trying to make all feel loved. But he also spoke of the necessity of continuing the process of reconciliation with those not present, Cubans in exile. Before leaving the island, he met with Cuban families and invited them to protect the home and families, the best inheritance we can leave to our future generations. La familia es escuela de humanidad. The family is a school of humanity, a school which teaches us to open our hearts to others' needs, to be attentive to their lives. When we live together as a family, we keep our little ways of being selfish in check. They'll always be there because each of us has a touch of selfishness. When there is no family life, what results are those me, myself and I personalities, who are completely self-centered and lacking any sense of solidarity, fraternity, cooperation, love, and fraternal disagreements. Let us care for our families, true schools for the future. Let us care for our families, true spaces of freedom. Let us care for our families, true centers of humanity. Centros de humanidad. On the fourth day of the trip, he landed in the United States, thus beginning the second half of the apostolic journey. He first hit Washington, D.C., including Congress and the White House. 
There he was received by the President, Barack Obama, and his wife. He went on to New York, where he spoke before the General Assembly of the UN during its Summit on Sustainable Development. On foot, to a stunned audience, the Pope criticized the lack of coherence of the United Nations and asked for a world without nuclear weapons. The preamble and the first article of the Charter of the Nations Unidas the preamble and the first article of the Charter of the United Nations sets forth the foundations of the international juridical framework. Peace, the peaceful solution of disputes, and the development of friendly relations between nations. Strongly opposed to such statements and in practice denying them is the constant tendency to the proliferation of arms, especially weapons of mass destruction, such as nuclear weapons, an ethics and a law based on the threat of mutual destruction and possibly the destruction of all mankind are self-contradictory and an affront to the entire framework of the United Nations, which would end up as a nations united by fear and distrust. There is urgent need to work for a world free of nuclear weapons in full application of the Non-Proliferation Treaty, in letter and in spirit, with the goal of a complete prohibition of these weapons. Hacia una total prohibición de estos instrumentos. The last leg of the trip was to the city of Philadelphia, where he met with a million people at the Seventh World Meeting of Families. At the closing mass, celebrated on the city's Benjamin Franklin Parkway, Pope Francis invited all to seek holiness in their little everyday actions. Son gestos mínimos que uno aprende en el hogar. These little gestures are those which we learn at home, in the family. They get lost amid all the other things we do, yet they do make each day different. They are the quiet things done by mothers and grandmothers, by fathers and grandfathers, by children, by brothers and sisters. They are little signs of tenderness, affection and compassion, like the warm supper we look forward to at night, the packed lunch awaiting someone who gets up early to go to work, homely gestures like a blessing before we go to bed or a hug after we return from a hard day's work. Love is shown by little things, by attention to small daily signs which make us feel at home. The Pope captured the attention of the world during those days, addressing some of the greatest government forums, but also reaching out to every man. Rounding out 2015, at the end of November, Pope Francis made his fifth and last international apostolic visit of the year, six days on the African continent, his first trip there as Pope or even before. He went to Kenya, Uganda, and the Central African Republic, where a government in transition rules the instability and the capital city of Bangui is largely in the hands of militias. Many define the visit as the most dangerous papal visit in history. In an historical moment, suffocated by war and terrorism, the Pope carried a message of hope and peace to the African continent. The central themes of the visit were interreligious dialogue, the witness of the Christian martyrs, reconciliation, and the fight against poverty and social exclusion. First stop, Kenya in East Africa. This, the scene that welcomed Pope Francis as he touched down an ever-present and contagious joy that wouldn't leave him over the two days he remained. He came to confirm Catholics in their faith, but he called all men and women of goodwill to work for reconciliation, peace, and forgiveness in a land often divided by corruption, violence, fear, and poverty. The morning after his arrival, he met with interreligious leaders, saying that dialogue between them is not something extra or optional, but essential, something which our world, wounded by conflict and division, increasingly needs. It was a rainy day, but that didn't dampen the mood at the mass that followed. This is the dry season in Kenya, and the precipitation in this season is seen as a great blessing. Well, plenty of blessings poured down with the Pope's presence, and the joy was apparent. More than 250,000 people turned out, and Pope Francis invited them to use the teachings of the gospel to transform the culture. In his last morning in Kenya, on November the 27th, his schedule was again jam-packed. 
making the most of his short time. Pope Francis first went to a Nairobi slum called Kanjemi. He said that the world has a lot to learn from those who live there, from the gospel values, the wisdom found in poor neighborhoods. I want in the first place to uphold these values which you practice, values which are not quoted in the stock exchange, are not subject to speculation and have no market price. I congratulate you, I accompany you, and I want you to know that the Lord never forgets you. Then, to recap a whirlwind two-day visit, a meeting with young people in the soccer stadium that had them dancing and singing Hakuna Matata. And then it was off again, for Uganda. The third day out of Rome and the second African nation, Ugandans celebrating the arrival of the successor of Peter in their midst. His visit was to mark the 50th anniversary of the canonization of 22 Catholic martyrs, killed between 1885 and 1887, along with 23 Anglicans, by order of the area's king for refusing to deny their faith. In his first address to the president and state leaders, Pope Francis remembered the martyrs as national heroes. They remind us of the importance that faith moral rectitude and commitment to the common good have played a continued to play in the cultural, economic and political life of this country. They also remind us that despite our different belief and convictions, all of us are called to seek the truth, to work for justice and reconciliation, and to respect, protect, and help one another as members of our, of our one human family. The Pope also praised Ugandans today for their strong families and their outstanding concern for refugees. And with the dawn of a new day, it was time for a new country, this time a country at war. It was the first ever papal trip to a war zone when on November the 29th, Pope Francis stepped into Central African Republic, or CAR as it's known. Security was a big concern going into the trip, but on the ground, the Pope was at peace. He was on a mission. He said he was there as a pilgrim of peace and an apostle of hope. He went first to a camp for people displaced by the violence. Several thousand now call this home. It's run by the parish of Saint Sauvoir in Car's capital of Bangui. These people have been living amid armed conflict in parts of the nation since 2012. Several bands of mainly Muslim rebel groups started it when they formed an alliance, taking the name Selica. Since then, the group has been seizing power, and fear and uncertainty have gripped the nation. The country's current leadership has struggled to maintain peace, leading ordinary citizens like these to take up arms or flee. Pope Francis wanted to speak to them in person. I read what the children have written on their posters. Peace, forgiveness, unity, and so many things. Love. We must work and pray to do everything for peace. But peace without love, without friendship, without tolerance, without forgiveness is not possible. And he reached out to the local religious communities himself, visiting both the evangelical Christians at their theological seminary and Muslims at their mosque. He said that members of the different religions are brothers and sisters, and that they must say no to hatred, vengeance, and violence together. The Pope told Catholics that they need to go beyond the violence to be witnesses of forgiveness. And in a beautiful gesture to show his closeness to the people of Car, Pope Francis anticipated the year of mercy right here opening the holy door at the Catholic Cathedral a week before it was to be opened in Rome. Today, Bangui becomes the spiritual capital of the world. The holy year of mercy is being anticipated in this land, a land that has suffered war and hate, incomprehension, lack of peace for years. But in the suffering land, there are also many countries that are passing through the cross of war. 
Bangui becomes the spiritual capital of prayer for the mercy of the Father. All of us ask peace, mercy, reconciliation, forgiveness and love. For Bangui, for all of the Central African Republic, for the entire world, for the nations that suffer war, we ask peace. And let's all ask for love and peace. Everyone together. Doye Siriri. A door of mercy, an appeal for peace. And that was the image and the message he left behind.